encourage you all now to wrap up your conversations and make your way to your seats so that we can receive from Pastor Richard West. Let's give Pastor Richard West and all the team from Liberty a real hand clap. And uh, also, this is reminding me of that story of the paralytic when they tore the roof. So I, everyone tells the story about the, the, the friends and the, the guy who got healed. What about the person who owned that house? They had to repair the roof. <laughs> They've graciously given us their very best. And uh, afterwards, if you want to stick around, I'm looking at you, and you're an able-bodied young person like myself, uh, we're going to help them f repair this hole in the roof they have because they got uh, a service tomorrow. All right, Pastor Richard West, bless us. Amen. Well, thank you. Thank you, Ted. Uh, before I get started, I just want to take a moment and give honor to whom honor is due. And I would just like to say uh, real quick, uh, Pastor Lonell, where are you? Would you just yell at me, wave at me? Uh, right there, see that man with his hands waving, wave at everybody. I wanna say thank you to Pastor Lonell for logistically putting all this together, making it happen. Hats off to you is right, God bless you. And, and then I just wanna also say thank you to Ted for catching the vision to unite us all together, to bring us together for what God wants to do. And then lastly, but not least at all, uh, I just want to give honor to the father of transformation, Dr. Ed Savoso, who you just heard. Uh, it is truly an honor and a privilege to have you here at Liberty Church and really at all Bay Area leadership, uh, just knocking it out of the park for us, giving us the context for why we are all here. Uh, I'm gonna go fast, I'm gonna share, uh, I only got just a few minutes, I wanna share some important things that uh, we as a church have done that really walk out what Ed just taught us. Uh, how can we be the ecclesia? Are there any pastors in the house? Come on, wave at me pastors, okay. I, I just wanna say, uh, everything I'm gonna share with you really comes out of Dr. Ed Savoso's book the Ecclesia, Rediscovering God's Instrument for Global Transformation. I cannot push this book hard enough. If you are a pastor or a business owner, you owe it to yourself to read this book. This ought to be the Bible of churches. This is what church looks like. We need to get rid of current church culture and embrace Ecclesia culture. And this book will show you how to do it. And I just want to encourage every pastor, you really should. This ought to be a must read for every pastor in America. Amen. I just, I can't echo that enough. And then lastly, he talked about it, anointed for business. If you are a business owner, this is the gold standard. You need, you need to get that book. Um, <clears throat> what really ignited me as a pastor of a transformation church are those two books. And I just wanna encourage you to jump into them. They make a huge, huge difference. We are all here because we wanna make a difference. We wanna make a difference in our own lives and in the cities that God has called us to. As you saw eloquently presented earlier, the ecclesia, the church, is the spiritual ruling assembly that God raises up in every district, in every region. And this is what our call is to be. We are to be the ecclesia. And as, as Ed demonstrated, the ecclesia was the vehicle for uh, culturizing and, and colonizing newly acquired territories. And that is what Jesus told us to do. Bring the kingdom of God right to where we live, right to where he's called us. And the will of Jesus is for us not just to gather and, and sing kumbaya and have spiritual um, uh, gatherings, but our call is to go and access every dark place, every demonic gate, and set God's people free. So I want to share how we have answered that call. Dr. Ed talked about a Luke 10 model where Jesus sent out the 70s two by two, and he told them exactly how to do it, how to bring transformation. And we get it backwards in the church. We take the last thing and make it the first thing and we turn people off. And, and so what we have to do is go in and find a person of peace and we have to bless them, 
we have to serve them, we have to begin to meet those felt needs so that we can release the power of God and then tell them about the kingdom of God. And as if you read Luke chapter 10, you'll see the disciples came back excited because uh, the demons were subject to their name. And Jesus said, no, here's what happened. Every place you went and put your foot, I saw Satan fall like lightning. God is waiting for the church to take possession of our inheritance, his inheritance, amen? And so that's what we are called to do. In 2020, we all are very familiar, familiar with the mandate that was given to us. Our governor locked down everything that was non-essential and the church was deemed as non-essential. And, and so we saw small businesses close their doors. We watched churches close their doors. Uh, so we decided, since we couldn't gather in the building, let's have church outside. So we began to gather outside, but more importantly, we decided, as you saw on one of the videos a moment ago, we decided it's time to take the church to the neighborhoods. Let's take the church to the people. So we started sending teams into a, a really heavily at-risk neighborhood where the 911 calls were the highest in our city. As we began to go into that neighborhood, we began to distribute food. Uh, we, we started getting calls, people saying, you know, I'm out of food, I don't have, I don't have a job. And, and so out of that was kind of birth the need or the desire to, for us to develop a food pantry, a food ministry. We ended up actually going from uh, my outreach pastor, Pastor Christian's garage, we went from that uh, into actually having to take a classroom and convert it to a, a, a food pantry. And, and so uh, we, we now have a food pantry that, that really takes up the space that we had as a classroom. And, and so we began to, to take food and minister to those who were struggling, hurting in these neighborhoods. And during the beginning, it was in March of 2020, I heard the Holy Spirit say, during this season of testing, I want you to sow and don't say no. And so uh, that was a stretch for, for us personally, uh, probably more for me than it was my wife. <laughs> She's a natural sower, a natural giver. She has that gift. Um, I'm, I'm like, you know, uh, I don't want to just give it away. I'll just be honest with you. But, but now I'm enjoying the art of giving, hallelujah. And so we started saying yes to needs. Most of these needs were people that I was in contact with in the Philippines. Most of them were either pastors or single moms that had no job now and had no food. There was no government uh, support, support or help. And so we just began as, as individuals and as a church, we began to sow. We, and so even though, like all the other churches I've talked to, the moment the lockdowns occurred, income dropped 30%. Well, our giving increased another 25, 30%. So it didn't make sense that, you know, when you have a drop in income, you just give away more. But that's what God told us to do. So we started reaching into the community, uh, and, and we had an organization who was watching what we did, and they gave us $5,000 so that we could buy a commercial refrigerator uh, to help us do more of what we were doing. And what we discovered is when we began to go into the neighborhoods and act as the ecclesia, uh, resources began to come, money began to come. Uh, and so in the year of 2020 and also in the year of 2021, we gave away just under 4,000 bags of groceries. Uh, we gave away boxes of food. Uh, last year, we gave over 5,000 bags and boxes of food away, hundreds of turkeys. We would go into the, this, this neighborhood. It started with one, and it ended up uh, being six. And, and so we, we would go in and do children's events outside. We would uh, do things that, you know, that uh, would bless the kids. Uh, we, during ha Halloween, we did a harvest party. Uh, and so the, the police took note of it because something happened. The, uh, the police chief uh, said to me personally, when you started going into these neighborhoods, the 911 calls dropped. And the city took note of it. And so I started uh, getting uh, the praises of city council, of the chief of police, uh, the, city, uh, the uh, city manager. They all started talking about how Liberty, literally they said, you are transforming uh, this city. And so I'll just, you know, you can look at some of these pictures as I talk. 
But we just began to go into these at-risk neighborhoods and we began to serve them. In 2020, uh, 241 people gave their life to Jesus as we began to reach into this first neighborhood uh, with 85 of them meeting weekly in discipleship. Out of that, we formed micro churches in these uh, specific neighborhoods that had um, heavy uh, concentration of population. And so we just said, instead of begging them to come to a building that they couldn't come inside, we just went there and started having church there. And so uh, we began to, like I said, reach out on, on Christmas. We gave a, uh, a gift giveaway. Uh, we gave away a lot of to uh, uh, toys. And so the, the police department said, we like what Liberty is doing. How can we help? So they donated a whole bunch of, of toys for us to give away. And, and that opened the doors of the hearts of mom and dads. And we began to minister to them. And over 500 people gave their heart to the Lord, hallelujah. And, and that's really what it's about. And, and so uh, this year, we are now on track for seeing 600 commitments to Christ. And we give away every single month 150 Bibles and hundreds more of the uh, Daily Bread devotional. And, and so we went to City Hall, we began to bless City Hall, we began to pray over our city, our governments. Uh, right before the pandemic, we were adopting a couple of high schools, and we would go into the high schools. One of the uh, high schools, Public Safety Academy, right behind our church, uh, said, you know, we ha our only need is, is we, we don't have copy paper. Um, the, there's no budget for it, and uh, our kids, you know, don't have copy paper. So we as a church said, hey, everybody, buy a ream of copy paper, and bring it. We had it stacked all across the front, and we invited, after about a month of raising copy paper, uh, we invited the, pre the um, high school, the uh, principal to come, and it literally took a forklift to haul the copy paper out of this building to donate to them, and it lasted them for two years. We handed the principal a check for several thousands of dollars that enabled them to buy uniforms for kids that uh, didn't have the money for uniforms and, and really couldn't attend the school without the uniform. We just began to uh, love on our high schools. We began to serve them. We started going in and doing teachers' lunches uh, and, and serving the teachers. By the way, I'll tell you what we did not do. We did not go in slinging scripture and, and, and you know, trying to get people saved uh, the first presence or the first conversation. We just went and said, hey, we love you. We appreciate what you're doing. We want to bless you. How can we serve you? What is your need? And we just began to reach into our neighborhoods. We began to reach into uh, our schools doing this. And I'm going to tell you, here we are, uh, four years later with the Adopt-A-School program, and all of the high schools are begging us to put a pastor or a youth leader on campus at the high schools. They've offered us our own offices on campus. We've been honored and awarded three times by the school district. Uh, the head of the school district said uh, to other churches, if you wanna know how you as a church can help us, Liberty Church is doing it right. They are the model that we want you to follow. Hallelujah. And God has just given us favor. He's opened doors by just doing what Dr. Ed talked about today, just being the ecclesia, going in and demonstrating Satan's defeat. Amen. And we started being able to pray for people that uh, had addictions, pray for people that uh, were depressed. And we just began to, one by one to see God bring redemption to six at-risk neighborhoods and several of our high schools, hallelujah. So we're just grateful to God. Our men's warrior group started uh, going out and doing barbecues. We had church in the park, and just we just started loving our city. We just started blessing our city. And I just wanna close by saying that as we were doing this, uh, I was attending Dr. Ed's conferences, and I would get challenged like I did this morning. I really got, I don't know about you, but I really got stirred up and challenged to do more. And, and how, can, how can we be this ecclesia that transforms 
our community. Um, as many of you may know, I, I have a huge missions outreach, and I'm a missionary at heart who happens to pastor a church. So I started taking uh, what I have learned from Dr. Savoso and from this book, The Ecclesia, and I started teaching it to the 25,000 pastors in my network in the Philippines and all across West Africa. And I'm going to tell you, God started manifesting his presence. And I'll, just, I'll close with this one story. Uh, so I was working with a pastor in a, uh, a town in the, the Philippines that had a U.S. air base there at one point. And because of that, there was a strip of uh, nightclubs that are well known throughout the Philippines. And a lot of uh, expats, a lot of foreigners come there because they can go on this strip, these nightclubs, and they can pick up on girls. There's a lot of sex trafficking that goes on there. So I got a call from the pastor that had gathered about 300 pastors for me to speak to. And she said, hey, before we do our conference tomorrow, she said, when are you arriving in the city? I said, actually, I'm two hours away. She says, great, at five o'clock, I need you to meet me on Walking Street and, and go to such and such bar. She said, I have already booked you to speak to the owner and to all the girls that are going to be dancing when the bar opens. And I'm in the car and I panicked. I'm like, I have never been in a bar in my life, okay? And I'm like, fortunately I had this evangelist that I met when I was in China doing missions work and she had joined our team and she was really gifted and uh, she was from Ireland. And, and so I, I said, hey, Joanna, I need you to go to the bar with me. <laughs> because I, one, I don't wanna be in there with all those girls, okay? Number two, I don't know what to say. And she laughed. She said, Pastor Richard, we got this. She said, just follow the Holy Ghost. And, and, and so we got there. And so I started just sharing a testimony. And I'm talking to these girls. And they're all sitting on these bleachers. And I'm leaning against the bar that they all dance on top of, okay? And, and so I'm talking to them about how much Jesus loves them. And I see this young lady. She is terrified. You can see the fear. You can see the terror. And, and so I said to her, um, sweetheart, I would like to pray for you. God loves you. And he told me to tell you that he wants to bless you. And she started shaking and shaking her head no. And so Joanna goes up, puts her arm around her and says, it's okay, sweetie. You know, we're not going to hurt you. Uh, God loves you. And he just wants to pray. So she brings her down and I pray for her. And the presence of God just waylays her. She gets up and she leaves the bar for good, okay? The owner, the owner says in Togala to the pastor that invited me there, can you ask your friend, the foreigner, if he could pray that God would bless my business? And he asked me to bless his business. And I said, sir, I can't bless your business because God considers your business a curse. And I just was straight up honest with him. But I said, however, I can bless you because God loves you. And so I prayed for this bar owner. And he's shaking. And he says to the pastor in Tagala, what is this power that is on this man. So we started talking to him about Jesus. Long story short, this man shut his bar down and turned it into a grocery store. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now that <laughs> is bringing the ecclesia into the marketplace. God bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. I appreciate it. Oh, man, I love missions. My wife's from Portugal. I love Portugal. I'm praying for the Philippines. This reminds me to pray for the Philippines. And I'm, we're going to pray for you, that he who has much, even more will be given. And I tell you, the Lord has brought the nations right here. If we can execute on what's right in front of us, we're going to change the world. 
Well, I don't think it's an accident that what you were just talking about is talking to trafficked people. Wow. He had asked me to pray just before I said, well, God, what do you want me to pray over Pastor Richard? <laughs> more brothels, my God. More strip clubs. More bars, my God. More street corners, my God. I pray you would use this mighty man of God to go and get those that are stuck in those places and let them know that they are blessed and highly favored. My God, I pray that you would anoint this man with words and with deeds and with actions and with strategies. God, you would anoint him. And God, if there's anything in his body that would hinder him right now, my God, I pray that you would heal him all the way from the top of his head, my God, to the bottom of his feet my God. He is anointed and blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo, 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 woo. 